For the basic rules, we use a fairly simple and abstracted set of terminologies to determine the rules around how equipment can be put together. So we we refer to these um, these tiers of cables as tier one, tier two, and tier three. So the tier one cable uh, is often referred to as the drop, and it runs from the tier one closure to the uh, tier one hub. So we've got two rules for this tier: the number of ports on the tier one hub, and the uh, the length. So that the port rules we're describing here, and these are example rules, and then the length of the cable from the tier one closure to the address. Um, can be specified as well. And then, again, these are example lengths. We can include any length there that we need to. So, as I mentioned, Fond will try to minimize the number of these closures, but it needs to do that within these rules. So, the minimum number of closures in a design would be one, but as we can only connect four addresses to a closure, if we were to use a four port size, uh, that, that changes the way that Fond will go about connecting addresses to closures. Um, so above the, the tier one tier is this tier two tier. So the tier two cabinet um, is, it's usually the location of the, the primary splitters in the design. Uh, and then the tier two cable is running from that cabinet to the closure. And we can set the sizes of cables that are valid to run between the cabinet and the closure. And we can also set the number of ports available in the cabinet as well as the split ratio that's inside that cabinet. Um, so the, this, this size here determines how many addresses can connect back to this cabinet. Uh, so auto design, it's gonna try hard to minimize the number of these cabinets. So what we could also do is specify um, a percentage of spare to be left at that cabinet. So we might say, always leave 10% of the ports free. And so fine, we'll minimize the number of cabinets while also allowing there to be some spare for, for future growth, um, potentially. So in a centralized um, split architecture, you might place a one by 32 splitter at this cabinet. Um, you could create a distributed cascade split by just placing a like nine one by four splitters in the cabinet and then using a one by eight splitter in the tier one closure. Uh, or you could just put the one by 32 splitter in the cabinet to have a, a centralized split design. And yeah, again, we can we can set the cable sizes that are valid for the for the tier three. So that's the the cables running between that uh, central office location or the tier two cabinet. So those rules that I mentioned will get applied across the whole design, and you can see that. So I've got two designs here. The one on the right, we've used a 288 port cabinet and the one on the left, we've used just a small 32 fiber, basically a closure with a splitter in it. And so you can see the result there is that the tier three cable has to push a lot deeper into the network as the splitters are more distributed across the map. Um, and so you can see here that the one on the left has got a lot more of those green um, triangles within the hexagon um, because Though those, those cabinets have got much less capacity than the one on the right. They've got 288 ports. And you can also see a difference when um, at the tier one level. So the, the tier one closures on the left have only got four ports versus the one on the right have got eight ports. Both have got a drop length of 750 feet. So in the areas where there's lower density, you can see that the design looks basically the same because the design is being constrained more by the drop length. But in the denser areas, you can see that um, there are a lot more eight port closures um, that are being used as opposed to four over here because the drop length is having a lower impact than the, the port count is.